Two steps forward, one giant step backwards. I'm Benjamin Higginbotham, and this is your Space Pod for December 14th, 2010. It's now official. NASA will be rolling back the space shuttle to the vehicle assembly building. But before NASA does that, engineers will conduct tanking tests at the pad no earlier than this Friday. Now, during the tanking tests, half a million pounds of supercooled liquid hydrogen and oxygen will be loaded into the iconic orange external tank. NASA will not only be filling the tanks, but also keeping the fuel there in a faux countdown designed to simulate launch day. Much like an actual shuttle countdown, there will be a series of holds giving the NASA crew time to check the tank, as well as full pressurization as the clock nears T0. When the tanking is done, engineers will then roll Discovery back to the VAB for additional X-ray inspections on the back of the external tank. If no additional problems are found, then Discovery will re-roll back to the launch pad around January 14th for the next launch window of February 3rd through the 10th. Now, since its first flight in 1984, Space Shuttle Discovery has been rolled back to the VAB five times. The first being after a pad abort on STS-41D in 1984. Ten. We have a go for main engine start. Seven, six, five. We have main engine start. We have a cutoff. We have an RSL abort. We have a an abort by the onboard computers of the orbiter Discovery. Then again, after cracks were found on lug hinges for STS-39 in 1991. Again, after woodpeckers drilled around 195 holes in the external tank foam for STS-70 in 1995. Once more for foam insulation problems in 1999 on STS-96, and again in 2005 for STS-114 in order to get a new external tank in preparation for return to flight. This will be the sixth and potentially final time Discovery has to roll back in what will be its 27-year history. Now, once Discovery is ready for launch, there will be hundreds of cameras capturing Ascent. Recently, the 45-minute long video, aptly named Ascent has been made available on YouTube, created and narrated by NASA engineer Matt Mellis and Kevin Burke. This is some of the most amazing space imagery and geekery you're going to see for a long while. Here's just a small sample, but you really should check out the full 45-minute clip. And so the purpose of this one is to check to make sure ignition is going off okay, which is what you're seeing here. Main engine start is just happening, and you can see the engines are starting one at a time. Uh, this particular camera looks at uh, engines number one and three, right? Is that what this is? Yep. And, um, and so you can see them, they're starting to fire up. Uh, those sparkers that you see are, are there to make sure that any unburned hydrogen gets ignited before it floats around and collects in some place where it can ignite later and cause problems. Uh, again, you're seeing the engines sort of turn on here. And so uh, we're roughly coming into about five seconds before liftoff. The computers are checking and validating that everything's A-OK. -okay. And uh, there's a little bit of a, of, of a pitch over that the whole vehicle does as a consequence of these, these engines thrusting off the center of gravity. And when the whole vehicle snaps back and is straight up in the air, uh, the engines uh, or the uh, boosters ignite and the whole thing takes off. Great, great photography here. I mean, you can see all this flow phenomenon going on inside the engines. Now, the space shuttle main engines are burning hydrogen and oxygen. And I'll talk about some of the fun facts about that later on in some of the other clips that you're going to see. But here you can see the engines have stabilized and uh, everything is A-OK. -okay. And uh, in just a few moments, you'll see the boosters fire off. All right, on the lighter side, Pratt & Whitney Rocket Dime has completed assembly of the oxidizer turbo pump on the all-new J2X rocket engine. The turbo pump is one of the most important and difficult parts to make in a rocket engine, so this is a great step forward for J2X. This new rocket engine will be used in the upper stage of NASA's upcoming... Let's end this space pod on some new space news, shall we? It sounds like Orbital Sciences and Virgin Galactic may be teaming up. Orbital is looking to put four humans into orbit around the year 2015 or so in a bid to win NASA's Commercial Crew Development 2 contract. Orbital's new spacecraft will launch atop the time-tested Atlas V rocket, carrying three astronauts and one paying space tourist to the International Space Station. So then where does Virgin Galactic fit in all this? Well, Virgin would market the commercial rides, conduct drop tests using their White Knight 2 vehicle, and offer transport services for the craft should there be an in-flight abort. Interesting bedfellows, as Virgin has also expected to announce their intentions to go after the exact same NASA contract later this week. No official word on that yet, but with all this competition, it sounds like the chances of you going to space 
keep getting better and better and better.